Welcome back to another episode of Father Mix Magic. Exploring the mysteries of life and faith through the gift of magic. I've just got a little something in my pocket that I wonder if anyone wants. Um, I wonder if anyone is interested in this. You would? Okay, I'll let you have that. Thank you. Okay, so you got your thing. I wonder if anyone's interested in this. <laughs> Even Clara wants this. So you know what this is, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Can you or maybe give that back to me for a sec and we'll leave that back to my pocket. Now, okay, put your hands down. Now, at the moment, you're interested in this, okay? But what about if I do this? Are you still interested in it? Yeah, yeah. And what about if I tread on it and just push my, sh I'll put it there and just put my shoe on it and I just rub it there. Are you still interested? Anyone still want it? Yeah. You still want it? Yeah. What about if I spat on it? Would you still want it? Yeah. 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 Interesting, isn't it? That for some reason, you always want this, no matter what I do to it. If I do this to it, you want it. If I tread on it or put dirt on it, you want it. Even if I spat on it, you still want it. Because what's special about this? It's worth something. It's got value. And even my crumpling it up doesn't change the value. Even my treading on it doesn't change the value. Even spitting on it doesn't taste, change the value. What we're gonna try to do, um, hold it, I better give Ryan back his, his, his one. You. you can have that. I want you to just watch, watch the, watch the, watch what happens. Because what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to fold it into a very small piece. Is, does it still have value? Yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. But then if I squeeze it really tight, it vanishes. And it just goes and no longer has it got any value. But can I have that piece of paper? I wonder, if we could take this and if we could do something magical with this. I wonder if we could do something magical with this. I wonder if we could turn this into a $50 bill. <laughs> and now, what, what seemed, so sometimes you can see it has value and sometimes it doesn't feel like it's got value. That's a mystery whether, it, do you think this has value? Yes. But it's only a, your piece of paper. I know. But it's still, you think it's valuable. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this into my pocket and take it down the bank and see what they say down there, whether it has value or not. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you so much for being our audience today. And I'm going to, now I talk to the people a little bit about that trick. Welcome back as we now explore that little object lesson. And it all revolved around this piece of paper. And I find it, I put it in because, did you see, I, I actually pulled out a normal piece of paper, one child put his hand up saying he wanted it and all the others couldn't care less. And then I pulled this out and everybody's hand goes up. Even the little girl who was only in kindy put her hand up. I want that, she said. And then I talked about what happens when it gets crumbled, what happens when it gets dirty, what happens when I, I, even if I spat on it, and they all still wanted it because they understood the intrinsic value of this piece of paper, this $50 bill. 
when I'm working with children and, and even adults sometimes, I invite them to think, if I hold a person up, who wants to make connection to that person? Some do, some don't. It's a bit like they see the person, those that don't are seeing the person like the piece of paper. And those that do see the person like the $50 bill. And yet when we're dealing with people, when we hurt them and crush them or put them down, they lose their value or they feel like they lose their value and people around them may feel like they've lost their value. But have they? They can see in the $50 bill, the value is always there. And my point of this object lesson is to say that your value as a human person, as a child of God, is always there. And no matter what anyone does to you, if they, they don't value you, you're still worth, you're still a child of God of infinite value. If they tread on you, you're still a child of God of infinite value even when people spit on you. And I know it's painful because it's painful because they're not honouring your value, but you are still a value. And when I did that trick, I, I've already given that, that, I gave the paper to one of the children, but I then sort of took the bill and just to make it magical, um, I, made the, I made the bill disappear. Like if we make it go really small, and it can feel like the bill's sort of shrinking, but I'm just folding it really small. But then if I fold it really small, it does feel like it vanishes and it's gone. And, but the value is still there. The value is still there. And our challenge is to always see the value in every person and in ourselves, no matter what. And you can easily make that value reappear, it, it will come back to us. So what's your experience of your value as a person? What, how do you see your value? Does it depend on what other people are saying? Does it depend on what God has said? I invite you to keep thinking about that question and keep thinking about the people around you and do you change your estimations of their value as well? Any other questions around that one? So one question is, why is it that we see one person of great value and other people medium value and other people we think they have no value? What we're looking at, we're looking at their attributes. John Paul II, that his wisdom, and we're using our eyes and our mind as a way of comparing values. And so the, the challenge is to make sure we look with our hearts. If you look with your heart, you will always see the total value and the dignity of a person. And so I encourage us to look at our own, through our own hearts and also learn to look at other people through our hearts as well. So another question that comes up is, what, are, what about when people only see themselves like a piece of paper and almost worthless and just to be thrown in the bin? I guess the secret there is to not just look at ourselves through our brokenness, but to see ourselves through the eyes of God. You know, I know for myself when I was growing up, um, especially as a teenager, I often used to think that I couldn't do things. And I had really good people around me. I had good teachers, I had good football coaches, and, and they would say, Vic, you can do it. You're, you're good enough to do it. And sometimes I still didn't believe I was. I believed like I was, I was the piece of paper, a very little value. But I valued those people, that football coach, those, that teacher, and one of my aunties especially always um, saw the specialness in me and would often tell me there was a specialness in me. And so I learned to 
listen to those people because they were close to me. And eventually, I also learned to listen to God and to hear, who am I through the eyes and through the mind and the heart of God, that I'm a child of God, that I'm a creation of God. And it takes time. I don't think it's something that we can just click our fingers and straight away it will become obvious. But listen to who the people who love you tell you you are. And that will awaken you from your ordinariness to your extraordinariness. And eventually, I hope you can hear it coming at you from so many different angles that you start to hear it from God as well. That each and every one of us are images of God, created in the likeness of God. We are each and every one of us children of God of infinite value. Just looking for this, um, this message in real life examples, I see it especially in teenagers. Uh, I see it in teenage boys who are really angry. And there's an anger inside them that, that, that can't be quenched sometimes. And, and we can say, well, what's, you know, what's, what's wrong? And usually the anger is that they have not connected to who they are, the goodness that's in them. And they're angry about that. And in girls, I, I also see it, but it often expresses itself in a different way because the boys react with anger and the girls react with worthlessness and insignificance. And, you know, we see, I mean, at its extremes, we see people cutting themselves. We see people, uh, uh, I don't know, letting themselves be abused because they've lost that sense of who they are. They've lost the sense of who God has made them. And so at the heart of uh, maturing as a, as a human being and, as, as, and especially as a Christian is to know in the depth of our being how special we are in God's eyes. And it takes a long time. We create false narratives of who we are or who we're not. And the challenge is to hear the narrative of God. It's in the scriptures, it's in Genesis, it's in Jesus' words over and over again in the way he treats those people who see themselves as paper and Jesus reawakens that they are infinite value and, in, and because they believe, uh, they can see a, a specialness in Jesus, they start to believe who they are in God's eyes. And so as we journey in life for ourselves, let's make, see if we can begin to see that for ourselves. And let's try to help those around us, especially the teenagers, uh, deal with that very, very difficult problem of self-identity. Let me conclude with that beautiful scripture passage that I'm sure you've heard. You've heard with your ears, but if you heard it with your heart, and do, do you start, have you started to believe it? And it's from the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 1, verse 27. So God created human beings in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then at the end of that chapter, we hear, then God looked over all that he had made and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. So once again, that's God's words um, reminding us of who we truly are. And God looked out and saw that it was good. God looked out and saw you and saw that you are good. You are created in the image of God. Go forth and live that image. Problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear. 